Hello everyone, I'm Jensen, your digital content producer. It is Tuesday, August 11th, and I'm about to get you all caught up on today's top headlines. So a couple things we're gonna look at today. Joe Biden has finally picked a running mate for the big November election. And there were some crazy social media rumors swirling last night about the city of Toledo. So we're gonna take a look at some of that, plus some other stories, of course. But before we dive too deep into anything, I wanna get you updated on the latest coronavirus data. So in the last 24 hours, there were 1,095 new cases of coronavirus reported, which is below the 21 day average of 1,220. However, coronavirus related deaths, hospitalizations and ICU admissions were all above the average, although this could be partially due to a lag in reporting from over the weekend. But with that in mind, there were 35 new coronavirus related deaths compared to the average of 23. There were also 131 new hospitalizations and 19 new ICU admissions. The 21 day average for those metrics are 96 and 16 respectively. Dwight also released an updated list of the 88 counties ranked from those with the most cases per 100,000 people to the least. Now, Lucas County had previously been at the number two spot, but today it seems that we've dropped to the number four spot. So it's good news. Keep it up. Locally, the only other county in the top 10 was Seneca, and DeWine said that outbreaks were traced back to a flea market, weddings, and long-term care facilities, but we'll know more about that on Thursday when the public health map is updated. Now, the governor did address schools today, but no major announcement was made. He mostly just gave us some quick statistics, and he had on three Ohio doctors to kind of break the situation down for us. So I'm going to give you a quick look at some of that information that was provided to us. Now, unfortunately, cases in kids ages 0 to 19 are on the rise. Back in March, this group made up only around 2.5% of the state's cases, but jump to August and that number is now at 12.8%. Now, the good news is, is that most kids don't get very sick and many don't even develop symptoms. However, it is important to note that this isn't always the case. And even if they are asymptomatic, they do run the risk of spreading it to those around them. So younger kids especially who need direct care uh, that could pose a bit of a problem here and DeWine noted that 38 percent of the state's public schools do plan to go back full time so here are some things that schools should keep in mind as they're preparing for school and trying to reduce that spread so doctors say the most important point here is that everyone who can wear a mask should be wearing a mask maintaining distance is also important six feet of course is optimal but not always possible. So even three feet of distance can help and more, of course, is better. Something else to note, the CDC defines significant exposure as being within six feet of an infected person for longer than 15 minutes. So it's a balancing act of time and space. Hand hygiene, of course, is also important. So wash hands frequently, make sure to regularly clean surfaces and keep an eye on ventilation. Teachers should be opening windows or teaching outside just when it's possible and that should really help. But again, no big announcement, but at least some interesting information. And if you missed it yesterday and are wondering about unemployment, DeWine did sign an agreement allowing an additional $300 per week. So that's on top of the regular state benefits, of course. Now, states had two options. Basically, the federal government was going to provide $300 and states could either provide an additional $100 for claimants or just leave it at the federal funds. So obviously, Ohio chose the latter. But we're not alone because a lot of states have been scrambling to figure out if they can afford that extra $100. Uh, of course, the economies aren't in great shape due to the pandemic. And the Trump administration did say that states could pull from federal coronavirus relief funds that were given out early in the pandemic. But a lot of states have already used that or allocated it, at least, to critical needs. So, so the problem is that the state governments differ than federal governments a little bit here in that they can't run up debt. They have to have a balanced budget. So it puts them in a bit of a bind. And of course, a big question for people at home would be, when would we see these funds? Well, we're probably not gonna see them until later in the month here because the state still has to figure out how to implement this new thing here. And we were also expecting an update on sports, which we didn't get from DeWine, but we did get one from the Big Ten. And unfortunately, they have decided to postpone fall sports until spring. So that unfortunately does include college football. I know, big bummer, but I guess at least we know. After yesterday's unofficial vote that I told you about, uh, several Big Ten coaches, including Ohio State's Ryan Day, Penn State's James Franklin, Nebraska's Scott Frost, 
and Michigan's Jim Harbaugh, they all took to social media and other platforms basically to plead the league to move forward with the season, although it seems their pleas fell on deaf ears because they did decide to postpone it. And shortly after this big announcement, the Pac-12 unsurprisingly did follow suit. So now the focus really is on the rest of the Power Five conferences to see if they do the same thing. And before we get into local news, let me just get you up to speed with Biden's big announcement. As you can see here, uh, the presumptive Democratic nominee chose Kamala Harris as his running mate for the election. Now, Harris has been a lifelong public safety and civil rights leader. She currently serves on the Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee, the Select Committee on Intelligence, the Committee on the Judiciary, and the Committee on the Budget. Biden made the announcement official in a text to his supporters and later tweeted out the big news. He said, I have the great honor to announce that I've picked Kamala Harris, a fearless fighter for the little guy, and one of the country's finest public servants as my running mate. Now, let's shift the focus to what's going on locally because there were some strange and concerning things being posted on social media last night that police say are false. So first, what are these rumors? Well, there were a ton of posts telling Toledo residents to avoid going outside between the hours of 1 to 6 a.m. And one post even said that this was some sort of Toledo purge that was being caused by a demon. So people were tuning into police scanners and they did hear a number of shots fired calls. So of course they were a bit concerned. Um, but here's what we do actually know. While police did file reports on six separate incidents, they don't believe any of them are connected at this point and are calling any sort of Toledo purge a social media hoax. In fact, only two injuries have been documented, which was a 23-year-old that was taken to the hospital in unknown condition after he was shot in Winterfield Park earlier in the day, and a juvenile appeared to be grazed by a bullet following an incident at a home on the 2500 block of Lawrence. So we do have more information on those incidents on our website right now, WTOL.com, if you need them. And if you have any information on these shootings, you are encouraged to call Crime Stopper at 419-255-1111. But let's shine a bright spot on local news. See what I did there. Uh, you should be able to see the Perseid meteor shower now, basically. So uh, if you're a nerd like me, it's all really exciting. It peaks tonight through Thursday with the best time to catch a glimpse generally after midnight. And get this, our first alert weather team is saying skies will be clear tonight. So if you can manage to stay awake that late, get out there. It's even better if you can get away from city lights. So maybe try that. But that's all I have for you today. If you want more on your top headlines, make sure to check out our newscast at 5, 6, and 11 on Channel 11, of course. And if you have questions, drop your comments. I'll do my best to answer them. But with all of that being said, I hope you have a happy Tuesday.